Mike, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always a pleasure to learn from you. But what are we standing by? What, why is this here? <laughs> Thanks for asking, Tony. Uh, this is just one of our display pieces. Um, it's a display piece for uh, a gearbox for an internal combustion engine. We utilize these at our open houses, our trade shows, and uh, it draws a lot of people in. But th the reality of it is, is um, we have these here because we specialize in finishing hard finishing these gears on the machine behind us. So that's what we're doing back here as well. That is correct. Um, if you're not familiar with this machine platform, this is our VL200 GT. GT stands for grind turn. Um, many, many years ago, uh, I'm going to say uh, maybe 1992, was when EMAG introduced the first vertical inverted spindle lathe that moved along its main axis, self-loading and unloading. Over time, what we did is we took that vertical lathe and added it or created a, a piece of multifunctional technology. And therefore, what you're gonna see behind me is a 12 station turret. Mm -hmm. You will then see a, a stationary spindle to do face or ID grinding. Mm -hmm. And then you see a stationary spindle to do OD work. So over time, uh, obviously the components within this gearbox um, have become more difficult to make. The tolerances, uh, the NVH requirements in automobiles are quite stringent. So over time, um, customers had come to us and said, hey, listen, rather than breaking up the operations uh, like we typically do and do an OP80 and an OP90, do you have a machine where we can finish this part complete in a single clamping? Therefore, EMAG, um, took their existing machine platform, the inverted spindle, self-loading machine, uh, and added spindle one for ID and face work and spindle two for OD work. So now, when we get this gear from heat treating, whether it's induction hardened or carburized, we can clamp the part, pre-turn, grind and finish it in a single clamping, ultimately lighting, ultimately providing uh, a part that um, has higher quality, okay? You know and I know that the more you clamp and unclamp a part, the more likely you are you are gonna lose integrity over time or face more difficulty in regards to finishing the part uh, to the part print specifications. Yeah, Mike, you're right, you're spot on with that. You really are. When we talk about being able to combine operations like this, we're really removing, and we have a lot of great coworkers and employees and colleagues and everything out there, but we're removing the possibility for operator error, right? That setup time, a reduction of, of the time of setup is right. So traditionally, this was done in two operations. You guys have now combined into one, reducing everything that you just described. Am I also looking at some form of automation over here as well? Yeah, the standard machine, Tony, comes with a, what we would call an O-loop conveyor. We can make it an I-shuttle, we can make it an L-shuttle. It's all dependent on um, how the customer wants to bring the part to and from the machine. Uh, today, you have machine tending units, you have robots, you have gantries. This machine is made for somebody to manually load um, somewhere in the area of 20 to 24 pallets or nests. What we typically do, we'll have a pallet or a nest, we set the part in, it moves into the home or the reference position. Uh, when a part is completely uh, machined, the spindle comes out, drops the part off in, a, in an open nest, that nest moves, indexes, a raw part comes into place or the home or reference position, we pick that part up, and then we begin the machining se sequence all over again. That's very interesting, and I know EMAG, and I know you, you guys are really great at supporting your customers being able to apply kind of how they would like to do a process because you guys are multifaceted in the way you're able to adapt specific situations to give them what they want and this is a good example of that as well isn't it it is and, and what you'll see here as I mentioned earlier we have a, a face or ID grinding wheel and we have an OD grinding wheel we can plug and play so if we wanted to remove um, this OD wheel and put another ID or face wheel in, we could. If we wanted to remove both of these spindles and go to um, a drilling requirement or a milling spindle, we could do that as well. So the base machine is modular. Uh, we can utilize it for hard machining. We can utilize it for green machining. Uh, and then we can plug and play with the spindle configuration. 
In talking with you as well, Mike, you guys at EMAG are famous for being able to produce parts quickly in massive amounts of numbers. When we think of that, a lot of us think about automotive, right? But everything I've just heard you describe, talking about with the customer internally on the machine, sounds very flexible. So you guys also focus on the flexibility to help your customers out as well, don't you? Yeah, that's correct. Um, what you'll see here on this machine is we have a, a ID mandrel, okay? Um, and when you talk about gears and you talk about variety and variation uh, that goes into this gearbox, the machine itself has to be flexible. The clamping solution has to be flexible. Uh, any part touching details on the front end that I mentioned earlier, the nests or the pallets that we, that we utilize, um, if possible, uh, we'll make a universal pallet, a universal nest. Uh, you know, Heinbook, I don't want to give somebody else a plug, but we use Heinbook a lot. Their technology is very flexible, quick change adapters, quick change cullets. So, um, you know, the machine itself takes care of a certain portion of that flexibility, and then the work holding, which is critical to making a, a very good part, is, is important to that flexibility as well. Well, Mike, I only have one question left for you based on learning all of this. Yeah. Can I take that home with me? For a small fee, yes. <laughs> Mike, Everything's for sale. <laughs> for a certain price, everything is for sale. I learned that a long time ago, Correct. right? <laughs> well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing this with the audience, guys. Thank you for watching and tune in to more amazing videos starring this guy right here and the EMAG product. Again, thank you all for watching. Mike, thank you for being a part of it. Thank you, Tony.